Why do Chinese students study abroad? What are their parents thinking? How does my Chinese culture influence how I live in the USA? Are Chinese students really thinking about their future when they decided to study abroad? I am one of those Chinese students. I grew up on a small island located southeast of China. I thought that would be my whole world. Before leaving for my university, I had no idea what long distance meant. I had never traveled more than four miles away from my home on the island. In my hometown, the life there is slower and more peaceful. We knew each other very well in one neighborhood. When I started in the middle school, one of my neighbors left us to the United States. Go to the U U S is such a sensationalized news at that time, because he was the first one who went abroad, and also you know it is less it was less likely to study abroad then. Later he told me that America is a totally different country. Only when you stay there, stay there for a while, and then you can get to know the amazing cultural differences and experiences the so-called melting pot. I think that was the initial seed sowed in my heart, and eventually encouraged me to follow his step. I chose Shanghai as a bridge to study abroad. Shanghai is one of the biggest city in China, and attracts millions of people from around the world. While staying in such a city, you will come to be shocked by the skyscrapers and the crowded people around you. For me, Shanghai is a city containing lots of different cultures. And it is also a place where the conflict between the Western culture and the traditional Chinese culture happened. While studying in Shanghai for my bachelor degree, I spoke to fellow students who were also planning to study abroad. We were so fascinated by our new lives in this strange environment. While studying in Shanghai. Our professors encourage us to seize the opportunity to experience life abroad in the USA. The most obvious difference between the Chinese and American educational systems is the structure of exams. In China, the student's task is to get a high grade on the final exam. Therefore, students spend lots of time figuring out what the exact answers are to specific questions in the textbook, rather than problem solving. Because of this narrow approach in education, many Chinese students are lacking in their creative abilities. So the idea is that if the student takes a chance and studies abroad, they might develop new and different perspectives. Especially by studying in a different kind of educational system and cultural society. When I began to prepare for the language examination, I suddenly found myself among lots of Chinese students who had similar dreams as me. I realized that there are many Chinese students eager to study abroad rather than staying in China. The number of students who want to go abroad study will be larger and larger.、Uh, the reason can be described as an example. For example, U.S. schools need international students to fund their、uh, educational systems, and、uh, we Chinese students, as、uh, international students, has the money to、uh, afford our study in U.S. Studying abroad is not only a dream among students, but also among their parents. More and more parents hope that their children will study abroad. 
and they are willing to pay for their tuition and living costs. My father, an ordinary person in China, is supporting me when I am living in the USA and attending ASU. There are several reasons why parents send their child to study abroad. Based on Chinese tradition, it is better to make up further trip than read more books. The experiences abroad can help youth better understand society by learning different cultures and gaining new perspectives. With the single child policy in China, the only child in the family enjoys too much from their parents, which is bad for their growth. The new generation needs to be more independent by experiencing life without the help from parents. Standing in the Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, this Chinese kid eagerly begins his new life in the United States. However, I came to realize this dream is not an easy one to live out. The environment and the culture are beyond my imagination, and it was not easy for me to get used to in the beginning. In terms of my daily life, I try to live my customary way of life, Chinese style. One of the most difficult things to adjust to was buying food and cooking. A simple thing like cooking and eating was quite difficult at first. In addition to the language barrier, which involves speaking English and understanding content in the classroom, the way in which I'm accustomed to studying made me feel overwhelmed at times. In China, students like to use standard answer. However, I expected the teaching methods to be different. Here, uh, any opinion can be provided. Professors and students are more like friends rather than the superiors and uh, subordinates. Mm, everyone wants to join in such a class without the authority relationship. However, when actually in this class, um, I found it hard to take part in initially. You know, with the custom before that everything was told by the professors, I cannot find a point myself to start. Unsuc unsuccessfully catching up what the professor said, I really had a hard time at the beginning. To be honest, uh, it took me several months to get to know the way people communicate with each other and the way the professor sat in the class. I think the most interesting thing about living in the USA is talking with different people about a variety of topics. It is exciting to learn the culture and Western traditions by listening to them. I am now living with my roommate Logan, who is an American. We talk about art, history, food, and sometimes even cook together. It is quite a scene to see a Western person and Eastern person cooking and sharing the food together. The table in our apartment is like a bridge between the Eastern world and the Western world. Here is a platform for us to explore each other's words. I like the skin. There are more and more activities I am becoming involved in as time passes by. Going to a party is a good way for me to engage and communicate with other people. It is not just a place where people get together to share the food and enjoy the music. I can usually know more people with different uh, backgrounds and you know it is it was so fantastic to talk with them about different topics from the paradise to the hell from the god to the buddha i think here people are more likely to be infected by the music and the atmosphere mm, i was invited several times by others to dance with them Actually, it was great, 
because it made me forget the sadness and helped me relax without any pressure. In China, there is nearly no such a kind of social activity. I think Chinese people are more willing to stay with closer friends. That might be easier to find a related topic.、Uh, but now I think it loses a lot of fun, a lot of opportunities to know more things, to know more friends. There are a lot of opportunities for entertainment here. People seem to be quite good at finding a way to celebrate an event or a holiday. Even an American football match between SU and another non-professional team, usually a team from another university. In China, people pay little attention to non-professional athletic events. However, the residents and students living in Tempe. Stream down the street, marching towards the ASU stadium to cheer for the host team. Before the match, sometimes there is even a parade held by SU or other local organizations. Everyone seems to enjoy the moment. After living here for more than one year. I thought my American friends don't care about much about where they will stay in the future. For them, obtaining a job and the kind of life they love are the most important things. However, in our Chinese tradition, we are accustomed to staying with our families. The single child policy is another element affecting my future decisions. And as the last day of graduate school comes closer, I have to take into account my future. Will I stay or go back to China? As parents get older, most of them want their children to come back home. This is our culture. Lots of older Chinese people who went abroad when they were younger still plan to go back to their hometown. Due to the inadequate medical system in China, many parents hope that their children will return to take care of them when they are old. However, I respect and will always support my child's decision. It is difficult for me to make a decision regarding my future. On one hand, I would like to enjoy my adventures here for a while after I graduate. On the other hand, I am the only child in this family. My parents will need me as they get older. Going back to China and maintaining my cultural tradition by staying with my dad and mom might just be another choice that I will make. Nonetheless, the experience has been very good. <laughs> 